Welcome to Destination History on Destination Uri. And today we've come to historic Green Castle in County Down. And uh, we're going to be meeting the lock pilot here, Leo Cunningham. And Leo is going to take us out on the pilot boat uh, in Carlingford Lock to the mouth of the lock at the Halley Hunter Boy, uh, where we will then retrace the journey of the SS Alder to the point where she anchored and sank out here uh, off Green Castle uh, on the 4th of April 1937. Now we're with the we're with the uh, the lock pilot Leo Cunningham uh, at the entrance to Charlingford Lock and uh, subsequently to the Newry navigation um, and we're on the pilot boat here and uh, we're coming up to the Halley Hunter buoy which is the uh, the leading buoy uh, on Charlingford Lock and um, Leo tell us. What does this boy mark? It's the uh, Halley Hunter boy, James. It's, it's the probably now that what you call the fairway boy. It's marking the shallow water reefs just outside the lock here. This a line of reefs just running towards the keel from here. And, uh, very shallow water. And tell me, Leo, what depth of water are we talking about? It's only like one and a half meters of water, but no water on, on, the, on the shallowest part on, on the Halley Hunter reef. And uh, at at say at at high tide, what type of what type of clearance would you be talking about on a on a typical ship coming in here? Yeah, well, you wouldn't you wouldn't uh, the normal ship. The the boy marks the rock, so it, it's a south cardinal boy, which means you stay to the south of the boy, which keeps you clear of the rock. Right. Yeah, but, uh, and this is the this is the entrance then to the boy channel in, in Carling Ford Lock. Right. Yeah, from here towards the lock now you you get onto the leading lights and the, yeah, that guide you towards the, the channel for the first boys, number one and number two boy. Now we're we're looking uh, we're looking Leo uh, we're retracing uh, the journey that the SS Alder would have made uh, in 1937. And um, how difficult would navigation have been back then? It would have been extremely difficult. There's no radar. They were going on the magnetic compass, probably just judging their their speed with time, time and distance, and time with the speed. And it'd be very difficult. Yeah, at different times to what we have now. So really, good seamanship was very necessary. Oh, absolutely. And the local knowledge, of course, then was all important. A man like Bobby Campbell, who who had that intimate local knowledge, uh, and and the Newry men who who navigated as well with fishers at the time, they all had that local knowledge. Definitely, yeah. And, and knowing the knowing the tides and the run of the tides and all of that too, yeah. Definitely. Well, Leo, uh, 
I remember your own father, Willie John, uh, coming to Newry, uh, piloting ships, particularly the timber boats. And um, how did you get involved in this job? Well, um, I got involved uh, well through, through my father and, and uh, my brother, my brothers, and sort of passed on. And I was only uh, you know, 16 when, when my father turned sick, and I left school to, to help out in the pilot boat. And sort of developed on from there. So, so how long are you doing this job now? They get the age away now. And tell me, Leo, um, what is the biggest ship you've taken into Carlingford Lock? The biggest ships, uh, well, the biggest ship would have been into Green Ore. Um, we're talking 35,000 ton dead weight, uh, upwards of uh, 200 metres long. So that would have been the biggest so far. In. That, that is the maximum you can have into the likes of Green Ore. And, and tell me, Leo, uh, has there ever been times when when uh, you were a bit nervous or worried or I asked Mickey Fern was he ever afraid and he rubbished me. Um, no, no, you, you know um, you know what you have to do and you do it. But the, the scariest times, I suppose, is, is trying to maybe get off, get on ships or leave ships, yeah. get down a pilot ladder into the boat in a, in a, in a bad night. That's, that's the worst thing. Mm -hmm. Once you're on board, you're alright. You know what you have to do, and you do it. You know what you're capable of. Well, just when you mention the bad nights, Leo, and I'm sure you have many a bad night coming in here, but of course, as you say, uh, different days and all the modern aids and uh, the comforts that um, indeed people have now. But I was thinking uh, of the Connemara Retriever um, disaster in 1916. When Captain O'Neill would have been standing on an open bridge on the Retriever after 16 hours uh, of a crossing coming from Garston, and uh, like, could you even begin to imagine, given your own experiences, what something like that must must have been like? Ah, uh, that, that must have been tough. You know, that was those were hard men, like tough men, definitely were. Um, but the whole different ball game now. It's you wouldn't be allowed to do that sort of thing now with rules and regulations, and hours of rest, and all these things going into now. And how how would you how would you estimate uh, the capabilities of those seamen? Ah, uh, those were excellent seamen. You know, there's, there's no doubt about that. Those, those men aren't about today. That you know. Thanks very much, Leo. Well, we're back on, on terra firma again after our trip out to the Heli Hunter and uh, we're standing on on the pier, uh, the wooden pier at Greencastle here and this was actually built way back in 1880 Leo by the railway company, isn't that right? 1880, that's right, with the LNWR, was it the London North West Railway Company? Yeah. Um, in connection with Green Ore and from this pier there was two Two old paddle steamer, like passenger boats, and mm -hmm. carried bits of cargo back and forward from from here to Green Ore. I suppose many of the person emigrated from here in them yep. days, got on the ferry in Green Ore and off to Hollyhead. So well, um, the railway company, uh, the the railway started in Green Ore in uh, 1873, and as you say, the London and North West Railway Company 
uh, they were the people um, in charge of it. And they operated the steamer service. Uh, we, we, you brought us to the rack site there of the Connemara. And um, really and truly, the, uh, it must be remembered that, that uh, primarily um, they, were, they were a railway company and, and they were used to schedules. And you'd wonder that night, everybody talks about the night that the Connemara sank. Um, and it was, a, it was alleged to be the worst night in 80 years in the lock. And you'd wonder at, at, at a passenger ship sailing in conditions like that. But again, uh, schedules dictate a lot, yeah. don't they? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I suppose at that time, the, the boat, the Connemara, was probably uh, a well capable ship at that time for the service she was providing. And uh, yeah, th th yeah, th th she really was. Uh, as I remember my father talking about that you, you could you would hear the ship going out and you could nearly set your clock. You know, a lot of people just used it as a timepiece. They knew what time she came, she came and she went. So yeah, that was the way it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, th th this pier is listed now, Leo, isn't it? It is. It's a listed building now. And uh, no, it's still it's still serving its purpose here and standing the test of time. Well, well, there's no doubt about it. It's, it's just uh, we, we, we saw the lighthouse earlier on and it was built in, in uh, 1824. 1824, that's right. Yeah. And, and as good as the day it, 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 it went off. Certainly is, yeah. Yeah, certainly is. A tribute to Moore and Granite and more, more importantly, uh, the, men, the men who built it. That's right. Yeah, all great, great craftsmen. Great men. Yeah. Had to be. Now your your family is actually responsible now for the the, the lighthouse and the, the maintenance of the boys. Aye, the family's involved in that. Yeah, my eldest brother, he Sean, he looks after the he's the attendant for the lighthouse and he looks after the just looks at general general upkeep of it and keeps an eye on things. I'm sure everything's working. And and uh, does he maintain the boys as well? Then no, Leo? Not another brother, Thomas. He he works on the on the boy boat. He's the, the skipper on the boy boat, and is the, the local harbour master as well, and looks after the boys. So he looks after all that. So so between the three brothers, you look after the 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 the, uh, the ship and rates and, and Charlie for We're Lock. all involved in it. We're all involved. Yeah, one way or another. And you were telling us there earlier on, you have, you have two ships waiting uh, outside uh, to come into Green Ore. That's right, it's a couple of ships waiting, yeah. Waiting for their berth, waiting on their, their turn, whenever their berth becomes free, and slot them in. So, uh, uh, busy, you're kept busy all the time then, Leo? Uh, it comes and goes, it comes and goes. It's, you tend to get a, a rush, maybe for a week or so, and then it goes a bit quiet. And, and you get a few more coming. It just seems to be the trend of the way things are going at the minute. Now we spoke we spoke um, about uh, green ore, and obviously the green ore has a, a great depth of water over there. Um, but one point is performing well and uh, very cargoes, and of course the Roro is a is the mainstay of the port, isn't it? It is the Roro. Uh, it's definitely the mainstay of the port, and uh, uh, the two container services running now steady, and uh, still a lot of uh, grain and timber and steel. So it's, it's it seems to be uh, going. It's going well at the minute now. It definitely is. But the ferry trade is doing well. Mm -hmm. They seem to be moving a lot of cargo. But yes, yeah, it's, it's a good port. It's a busy port. But it's uh, again, it's a it's a very very competitive market out there, isn't it, Leo? It must be. Yeah, it has to be has to be it's just sign of the times tell me um just something that, that, that uh, intrigues me um how do you how do you become informed of uh, arrivals to the lock well every ship every ship coming uh, has a shipping agent and the the shipping agent is his responsibility to keep everybody informed and pilots harbor everybody so it's through the shipping agent which we, we uh, built up Good relationship with them over the years, and work with them. And and they they coordinate uh, the, the the ship's passage in and out with yourself. Yeah, yeah. They they inform us of whatever time the ships are arriving, and then we, we 
kind of take it from there and rearrange them, whatever, depending on the draft of the ship and how heavy she is, you know, what time she can come in on, on, on the tide and so on and so forth. And now, now you're getting help from the next generation also. Next generation's coming on behind too, yeah. Thank God. You have two sons engaged with you? Two sons, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're coming on. They're both licensed now on the lock and, uh, yeah, good good help, good seat. So, Keep it in the family. <laughs> so so uh, the, the, the legacy of Willie John lives on? It does, definitely does, yeah. And, for another generation anyway and good to see it and, and long may it continue Leo thank you very much Leo Cunningham Carlingford Lock Pilot alright James thank you thank you Leo good man thank you well um, Paddy you were with us there uh, Paddy McCann former Newry Seaman uh, brought back a few memories for you Paddy sure did. lovely lovely out there today just took back old memories very nice, very nice. The, 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 the few hours went like a, like a minute. I heard you talking, Paddy, about uh, swimming in the lock when you were laying at anchor. Oh, I managed the time there, but sure, the water was that cold you couldn't swim. It, it, it was very appetizing when you seen the sun out and that when you, you, dive in, you, had, you thought you were, you were diving into a bucket of ice. <laughs> and that's, that's for sure. No, I, I tried it once or twice. Far, far too cold. Well, tell me, Paddy, we talked earlier on with Leo about bad nights and one thing and another. I'm sure there was many a night you were, you were glad to see that uh, lighthouse flashing when you were coming out of the Irish Sea. Okay, but it's like everything else. You, 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 it's like same you, you hear of a woman having a baby, she tells you it's going to be her last. And you say the same thing, no more. And the next thing you're out in it again. <laughs> Not at all, no. It's, it's, it's like water under the duck's back. It's just one of them things. You either, you either have it or you don't have it. Well, Paddy, to get back to your old mate, uh, Mickey, Mickey Fern, were you ever afraid? Never, never. The way I always seen it was, no matter what job you done, always remember, one for yourself and one for the company. Never put the two for the company, and you not go wrong. Paddy, thanks very much. I'm joined here in uh, Greencastle now by Jim Graham. And Jim's a Cologne man and uh, an ex-merchant seaman, an engineer in fact. And uh, Jim worked his way through the ranks and uh, was a chief engineer. Um, Jim, did you enjoy your trip this morning? Yes, I did indeed. Very informative. And, and of course, uh, your, your seafaring career uh, took you far away from Carlingford Lock. Yes, our main run would have been China and Japan, and uh, sailing from Liverpool, so we never came even to Ireland at all. Now, um, your, your, uh, your era at sea was when? Uh, 1949 to 97. Now, during those years, um, was, there, was there many seamen in the Moorn region then? Well, there was, would have been, but I didn't sail I know, with any of them. Yeah, I know you didn't sail, but was there was there many seamen? There were many seamen. Yes. In the coasting trade? Coasting and deep sea. Yeah, both. Yeah. There was a Captain Milligan from, from Killowan. Uh, was an oil tanker, wasn't he? Yes, I knew him, yes. He was an oil tanker through the war. Very good. And tell me, Jim, um, after you retired, uh, you, you actually you were involved here uh, with the Carlingford Law Commissioners. That's correct, yes. I uh, designed their boat for the tents of the boys, navigation boys in Carlingford Lock, and supervised the building of it in Scotland. And I look after it still just day that, to day. That's of course the sleeve bond. Sleeve band, yes. And tell me, what, what year was that built? It was delivered in 1992. And it's been working on the lock service and the boys since. Yes. And uh, which of the Cunningham brothers looks after that? Thomas Cunningham. He's the skipper and the harbour master of Carlingford Lock. And you still, uh, you still attend, take a, yes. take an interest in the in, yeah, in the tug. Day a week or something like that. Very good. Well, tell me, Jim. Um, 
if you don't mind me asking, you're, you're, you're a very fit and active man. What age are you? Well, I'll be 80 in my next birthday in November. And still keeping your hand in? Yes, yes, I still enjoy it. <laughs> well, that's the main thing, you enjoy it. Yep. Jim, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank very you. Much, Jim. Thanks, Jim.